I was interested in the nexus between AI and robotic and lethal autonomous weapons, killer robots. And so that's really what this book is about. An excerpt from today's guest, New York Times bestselling author Mark Greeny is here, and we discuss his latest military thriller, The Chaos Agent. Next, I'm Robert Child, and this is Point of the Spear. February is Black History Month, and my new book, Immortal Valor, about the Black Medal of Honor recipients of World War II, is out now. The book chronicles these immortal heroes' life journeys through all the pain and struggle up until their ultimate triumphs. I hope you check out the book to discover more as we celebrate Black History Month. Just visit my website at robchild.net or visit any online retailer. His book is called The Chaos Agent, the 13th book in the Gray Man series. And New York Times bestselling author Mark Greeny joins us now. Mark, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back. Absolutely, sir. And this book's theme is uh, really, really interesting to me, the AI, and it, w- and it could be eventually weaponized. How deep a dive did you do into artificial intelligence? And do you believe um, weaponization is a real danger? I write almost two books a year, so I have six to eight months to to research these things. But this was something that I was really interested in, especially the kind of the the fact that uh, commercial private uh, companies are the ones that are, you know, it, it, at the forefront of developing the the most sophisticated artificial intelligence. So I was interested in the nexus between AI and robotics and uh, lethal autonomous weapons, killer robots. And so that's really what this book is about. And so the research I did was read a bunch of books, read a bunch of books more than once. Um, I think I figure I listened to about four or 500 hours worth of podcasts and audio books and uh, read a bunch of government, you know, documents and uh, publications on it. And really, they, it, there's nothing in this book that's science fiction. It's all either existing or emerging, emerging technology. Oh, okay. Yeah. So nothing from just your imagination. It's all existing now. Yeah. I, I will say that I kind of weaponize some things that maybe aren't weaponized. Some, mm-hmm. some, some of the bipedal robots, you know, I, I put guns on them, but the, there's a, there's a robot in there that's uh, called a greyhound. That's a four-legged robot with a rifle on its back. And that has been made in, in, as a prototype. Um, so a lot of these things are, existing or some of them i've kind of tweaked or just imagined where we might be in six months with them if you had a bad bad actor trying to uh take care of them yeah i've seen some of those videos where where the dog's walking around it's pretty frightening without a a weapon on it (laughs) yeah yeah for sure how much have you used ai just in general in your life you know other than the algorithms that fuel social media you know um The internet is the central nervous system of the world, of our society, and it's hard to know what is AI these days, and it's Mm -hmm. only going in that direction. Um, I've played around with ChatGPT. Uh, It came out a few months ago that some of the data that it used to create uh, some of these large language models was taken from books um, that, that were you know, online sort of bootlegged online. And there was, they could list all the authors. And I looked, I looked and I saw that like nine of my books, some of the Clancy books I did um, were involved. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands. So it wasn't, I'm not that unique. And uh, somebody asked me, you know, like, what do you think about that? You know, doesn't that infuriate you? And I'm like, Honestly, from my research, it's not the worst thing that artificial intelligence is going to do to me <laughs> over the course of my life. So I, I, I'm pretty, uh, you know, like, you know, it, it, in the scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. It's funny. I've, I've used that as well uh, in writing some blog articles, G, uh, chat GPT. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember thinking I wanted a quick story on Gettysburg about a certain angle about it. And I, I put a prompt in a chat, chat GPT. And it came up with a story, and it had the uh, had the Confederates winning the Battle of Gettysburg. And I said, well, "Wait a minute, <laughs> what's yeah. going on?" <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's garbage in, garbage out. So it's getting things off the internet, and uh, and 
sort of extrapolating them. There was a, a famous thing where it, it was asking something about Elon Musk and it was saying Elon Musk was, was killed in a Tesla crash. Um, <laughs> it's like they the, the, it understood that he owned Tesla and they didn't understand that that didn't mean he owned a Tesla. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah, uh, it's, it just sort of extrapolated uh, a future to it. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, um, in this book, I've read in other interviews that you introduced a new element, uh, the element of mystery for the reader. Can you uh, go into a little bit about that? Yeah, I wanted to make this story. I want to make all my stories somewhat different from the others. And this one, there's a cat and mouse aspect of it. My hero is a uh, former CIA officer named Court Gentry. And he's usually you know a tip of the spear type of guy and he there's a lot of that in this book as well but at the same time they have to unravel what's going on and the reader doesn't have all the information at the beginning um, in a lot of my books i go straight into the bad guy's pov and you you learn who the bad guy is and what their mission is and um, in this book it's a little bit different you sort of have to suss out what's going on as as the main characters do the same thing. I think a lot of people will have suspicions throughout and some of their suspicions will be right and some will be wrong. And I think that that makes these types of books a lot of fun. And I read where you reveal the uh, mysterious element only at the right time. For the Well, I, I hope I do. I hope I do. <laughs> That's a thing you really struggle with. You know, it, it, it's I've I grew up on these books with Frederick Forsyth and DeMille and Lake Carré and um, Clancy where you have all these multi plot lines and they sort of thread together at the right point. And so it's, it's always something that I'm desperately trying to capture because I, I, I know how much I enjoyed reading, reading books where that all comes. You have these aha moments as they call it in Hollywood. And yeah. uh, these, these aha moments really um, are impactful. Yeah, I agree. The book opens with court and Zoya, his love interest settling down to a quiet life in South America but Zoya's hiding something from court. Was this part of one of the mysteries you wanted to weave into the book? Honestly, yeah. It's the, so the psychology of these characters is always really interesting to me because, you know, you create this character that's, you know, killed all these people, had everybody after him. Um, you know, in every book, he's has to run a gauntlet of people who are trying to, you know, try to do him in. So you I spend some time thinking about what what that would be like. And I've put him in a relationship with somebody he really cares about. And I think and I just was thinking, like, what if what if his trust in her falters because of something that happens, even if it's something sort of innocuous or something that, you know, they can talk their way through? Is, is he going to build those walls back up so, so fast um, because he is kind of set up to be paranoid as, mm. as, as a way to live. So I think that was the main, you know, the, the main reason for that was just sort of like investigating what a relationship would be like between two like high level intelligence assets who are hiding out in the third world in a very peaceful place. But would, would they be carrying some of these demons along with them? And which she, uh, she was. Yeah. Um, now in the book, you write uh, about a lot of international locations that you may not have um, been to yourself. Is it a challenge to write about uh, far off locales? It is. Um, I go to as many places as I can in the time that the time that I have. Um, I just got back from West Africa from another book uh, mm. uh, in December. For this book, I had spent a lot of time in Guatemala, uh, months and months in Guatemala, especially in this region that I write about. So I didn't go back to research specifically for this book because I know it really well. Um, but I did go down to the coast in Mexico uh, to write that part. And a lot of the book takes place in Cuba, and I was unable to go to Cuba. I just didn't have time in my schedule as I was writing the book. So I'm like, I'm going to have to figure this one out. I think I've been to 30 something countries researching either these books or Clancy books or other books that I've done. And um, I get a lot out of that, but there's also books yeah. where I had to write on my couch because I had to have an ankle surgery right before I went to Vietnam uh, for a book I did called Gunmetal Gray. And so I'm like, all right, I got to, I've got to sell this from, from my couch. Yeah. Look up on uh, Google maps and uh, do yeah. things like that. Yeah. 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 I want to turn to um, 
your uh, television projects, and I wanted to see if we could get an update on how things are progressing. Is there a, a follow-up to the Gray Man film? Uh, there is supposedly going to be a second Gray Man film. I know they have a script. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the script is all polished and they're going to be making any announcements soon, but I know that was the intention. I have another series that recently sold to television, not Gray Man, another one. And um, the second book in that series comes out later this year in June. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping to get a second bite at that apple, but uh, it, it's it's always a super long shot. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I hope something will, will come out about the Gray Man pretty soon. Uh, I will probably learn about it the same time everybody else does, just like I did when the first one, when they actually greenlit the first one. Uh, I, I saw it on the internet. <laughs> That's how I found oh, it. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> how did that, uh, how was the reception of that film on Netflix? I mean, it, it's the, it was the number one film of 2022 when it came out. It was number five film on Netflix of all time. Excellent. Um, fans are definitely mixed on it because it's very different from the book. It's, it's the book is a lot grittier. Uh, the first gray man book is you know, a lot grittier. And obviously as a writer writing a hundred thousand word book, you can go deeper into the characters and motivations. Another thing they changed in the film was they were setting it up for a franchise from the beginning. So they introduced some characters that aren't in the first gray man book, but they're characters in the series villains that come, come mm -hmm. along later. So, you know, it made total sense for them to weave that in. So I was happy with it. And, uh, you know, I think the, the casual viewer is happy with it. Uh, the fans are kind of split on whether or not it was true enough to the book, but I never went into it expecting it to be, you know, the same thing as the book. Oh yeah, obviously they have to make some changes. Yeah. Did the writer strike uh, impact the second film at all? Yes. Um, I, I know where they were with the script before the writer's strike, and I don't think it really got touched <laughs> during the writer's strike. So I think that's probably slowed things down uh, yeah. a, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the book is called The Chaos Agent. Mark, thank you so much for coming back on the show today. I always enjoy it. Good to see you. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Robert Child, and this has been Point of the Spear. Music licensed from audioblocks.com. Point of the Spear is produced by RSC Media Group.